Okay, you know that you're standing in a historically significant place when you have not one, not two, not three, but four historical markers all within about uh, 15, 10 to 15 feet of each other. So let's talk about uh, the first one. You, you heard about the railroad cut a few minutes ago, and that's just what it sounds like. That is the Inman Park Marta Station, okay? We walked across the bridge earlier when we came over from Reynolds Town. This is, well, I'm, uh, this is DeKalb Avenue. On the other side, literally just on the other side of this building, is the CSX rail yard called Halsey Yard. That was the Georgia Railroad. That, is, that was there. That was what the Union Army was trying to destroy from Decatur all the way into Atlanta because it was supplying uh, supplies, ammunition, cannons, food, everything from, uh, well, from Virginia. They would bring it down uh, through Augusta and then over uh, into Decatur and into Atlanta via the Georgia Railroad. The cut was literally a cut, a ravine that was cut out that crossed the railroad. So what it's saying here is in 1864, the single track of the Georgia Railroad ran through a deep cut opposite this point. Crossing it uh, and the Decatur Road was the entrenched line of the Federal 15th Corps, Army Corps, as of July 22nd. This was a sector of McPherson's Army uh, of the Tennessee, Army of the Tennessee, which occupied trenches vacated by General Cheatham's Army Corps the previous night. Cheatham's troops temporarily recovered the line here late afternoon of the 22nd, mostly by frontal assault, partly by penetrating it, and the unguarded cut, an episode portrayed in the cyclorama uh, at, the, at Grant Park now, a buckhead. The ground was greatly altered after the war the railroad cut was still visible as late as 1903. Okay, what else happened here? We, we heard about Manigault a few minutes ago. Manigault uh, was coming up uh, from Springvale Park. Remember, he's the guy that regrouped, his brigade regrouped in Springvale Park where we just were. In 1864, Manigault's brigade, Brown's Division, Cheatham's Army Corps, attacked this sector where Martin and Lightburn's brigades were posted astride the Decatur Road and Georgia Railroad cut. Manigault's troops broke the federal line at the cut, thereby forcing the withdrawal of Lightburn and Martin from, its, from this sector of the entrenched line of Logan's 15th Corps, Logan being the Union uh, Corps commander. A counter-assault by Lightburn and Martin, together with Mercy's 16th uh, Army Corps Brigade, brought up from the battlefield area south of the railroad, that's part of the Confederate uh, group, up in the battlefield area south of the railroad, recovered the federal line and the digress battery, which, I'm sorry, so Lightburn and Martin, together with Mercy's 16th Brigade from the Union, brought up the battlefield area from the south of the railroad, recovered, by the, recovered the federal line and the digress battery, which Manigault's men had seized but not been able to hold. My understanding is that it was about 30 minutes that they held that line. 15th Corps sector the July, on July 20th, so two days before, posted on this ridge astride the Georgia Railroad was the right flank of Hood's old corps. General Cheatham's commanding uh, on July 22nd, these troops were withdrawn before daylight to the city's fortifications, which would have been back over there near Grant Park where we started the tour. Uh, the vacated line was occupied by Logan's Corp, that's the Union side, which was reversed to faced westward. General Morgan Smith's division centered at the railroad, Lightburn's brigade posted between Degress Battery, Degress and Battery Place, west of the Hurt House, which is our next stop, and Martin's south of it, the railroad cut separating them. The Confederate assault in the afternoon of July 22nd broke the lines of Lightburn and Martin's brigades at the Decatur Road and the railroad cut. And then last but not least, the site of the Pope House. Opposite and north of here was a two-story white house said to have been the residence of Widow Pope, which figured prominently in this sector of the Battle of Atlanta. On July 22nd, as Manigault's brigade from the Confederates moved to the assault on the federal line at the Hurt House, its alignment was broken by the Pope House and outbuildings while reforming some of the 19th Corps ascended to the second floor and fired into the federal batteries at the railroad cut, pressing forward the 10th and 19th Corps, aided by the 28th Alabama, penetrated the federal line at the railroad cut, seizing the batteries and there and 
uh, in a leftward drive the Digress battery. Okay, so that's a long video, but I'm at the corner of DeKalb and Battery Place. That is Battery Place right there. And our next stop is uh, Digress Avenue, which is the True Pert House, and I'm heading there now.